So let's start with the team news. Um, Decky, any update on Declan? Um, yeah, Declan's struggling for, for the game tomorrow night. He's got um, a, a groin issue that's kind of leading into a, a hernia type injury. So um, yeah, he'll need to get a tidy up on that and probably will be out for a you know a, a period of time, probably two to three weeks possibly. Okay. I mean, two to three weeks, obviously you would want him, you, you know, for the next couple of games. But it could be worse, I would have, have thought, with someone like that. Could it, I mean, it could have been longer, so it's maybe not, not such a bad thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not so bad. Um, it's something that he's been trying to persist with, you know, um, for the last couple of months and, you know, being the type of character he is and wanting to help the team. He's been playing through the pain barrier, but, you know, unfortunately against our growth, um, it just uh, it just gave way on him. And, um, you know, we just felt it was best to to get this looked at properly and, and get it tidied up because, you know, we really need him um, going into the business end of the season. So if it means losing him for uh, two or three weeks, then that's that's what we have to do. Louis Moult obviously went off at half-time in the last game. Any, any update with him? Yes, Louis had a, a tight hamstring for the last 10 minutes of the first half um, and, you know, just was quite concerned about it at half-time. So we, we made the decision to take him off at that period. Um, it has made progress and we've got a decision to make this afternoon. I've got a meeting with the, the backroom team this afternoon to discuss what that looks like and whether we take the risk with him tomorrow or do we feel that that might be detrimental to Louis in the long run. You know, um, What we don't want to do is risk him and ask him to play through it and then it becomes a six to an eight week injury with, you know, we know what hamstrings can be like. Um, if we don't play him, then you know he'll definitely be available for the next game and uh, for a prolonged period of time after that. Any other team news? Um, no, I'm obviously delighted to have Alex Grieve in training with us um, this morning, and uh, you know, very grateful to to St Mirren and the guys over there for being so straightforward and, and helpful in terms of making the deal happen. Uh, a player I know well, you know, brought him into St Mirren uh, from New Zealand. Um, you know, got a great attitude. Um, you know, real infectious appetite for the game. Uh, never stops running, never stops working hard for his teammates and I believe he'll score goals at this level uh, given the opportunities that we create consistently in the games that we've played up to now. You know, Alex will get two, three good opportunities a game and you know, hopefully he'll be able to take one or two of those. I suspect you won't say any more about David Wotherspoon uh, given that he's still contracted to, to, to Inverness. Um, but beyond Alex and David Wotherspoon, would you be looking to do any more business here in this window? Uh, well, well, we've got... When everybody's back fit, we've got quite a, a strong squad. You know, we've just been a little bit unlucky, I think, recently with the you know the players that we've had to go without. Um, you know, obviously we missed Gal at the the weekend against Morton. Um, you know, Ross Dockery's been out for a considerable period of time. Archie Meekison as well. Uh, thankfully, Archie has trained this week and looked really good, and he's strong enough now and fit enough to be part of the squad for tomorrow. So um, you know, that's a bit of positive news. But you know, we. We found it very difficult all season to have a consistent uh, squad of players fit and available. There's always been somebody carrying something, and I know that's you know similar for every manager and every other team out there in the country. But um, you know we're missing some really key influential players at the moment, right through the spine of the team, with Gallagher, Doherty, and Molt probably being you know three of the most experienced players. Um, in the squad, so uh, you know it's it's just a it's a testing time for the group. Um, you know, it's an opportunity for somebody else to step in and and uh, and take the reins. And um, I've got every faith that the players that we select tomorrow will be good enough to go and get the job done. Craig suspended, isn't he? For uh, of course, yeah, well. yeah, Sibs. Yeah, I mean, look, <coughs> Sibs is um, he's been so consistent. You know, that's what he gives you every week. You know, he's. Uh, he never lets you down. He's he's hugely influential in the way that we want to try and play. Um, you know, very brave on the ball. Will demand it from the centre backs. Uh, good range of passing, and what he does for the team out of possession. You know, a lot of it maybe does go unnoticed at times, but his reading of the game out of possession, his discipline. Um, you know, just breaking things up in the middle of the park, and you know, the fact that we have to go without such an influential player tomorrow is doubly frustrating because when you watch that incident back where he picks up his second yellow card I don't think there's anybody uh, in the game that would have uh, agreed with the decision at the time you know he clearly wins the ball and um, and shouldn't have been sent off and should be playing for us tomorrow night in Inverness Obviously there's been a few headlines the last 24 hours 
done it in off the park with the latest set of accounts. I'm just wondering from the manager's point of view, I mean, from the outside looking in, they look quite quite worrying. What's your take on the situation? Uh, it's all stuff that obviously you know we have dealt with internally and discussed internally, and I, I've been well aware of um, of what's been going on. The the chairman and the, the chief executive have been you know very open and honest about the situation. Um, I think it should be reassuring to all of the Dundee United supporters out there that you know the chairman's words in his statement I thought were were spot on, and when he's speaking to me and to the rest of the team here, um, you know he's on board and you know he's. Back in the club financially, I don't think anybody could, could doubt the um, uh, what he's done up to now in terms of the financial but support that he's given to the club. So and and that will remain. That will remain. I think it's normal for any big team, um, you know, to go down and get relegated. Um, you know, for them to carry a loss. You know, that's just part and parcel of it. Unfortunately, uh, it was a disappointing campaign last year, and the implications of that are what you read. In the accounts, um, but it's up to myself and the backroom team here and the players, to uh, to make sure that we you know achieve our main objective, which is to get the club back into the Premier League, so that all of those things financially uh, will then take care of themselves, hopefully. Because it was mentioned throughout a number of uh, stages when you read through the report, the importance of getting back to the Premiership. When you see those kind of figures, does it put more pressure on you to to get the team back up to the Premiership at the first attempt? Listen, the the board of directors don't put pressure on me. I I you know very good at putting all that pressure on myself anyway. I know what the job entails, and I know what we have to do, and I know why I've been brought in here. Um, you know, we are the biggest club in the league. There's no, um, getting away from that, and it's, you know, no disrespect to any other, uh, team in the league, but you know, historically, Dundee United has always been a top division team. Of course, the kid has been a you know a few bumps in the road along the way, but, um. I think most people out there, uh, from a neutral perspective, definitely, and and from a football perspective, I think would want to have the, the top teams in the Premier League. I think it's better for us as a country. I think it's better to market the game with that, and um, of course, it brings its own added responsibilities for myself and the rest of the group. But that's what we have to do. You know, I think we've handled the expectation very very well up to now. You know. Um, We've been on a great run, okay, disappointing result last Saturday, but uh, you know, to only have lost two games in the league up to now I don't think is a is a disaster. And uh, we've got an opportunity tomorrow night to try and get back to winning ways. And obviously every every penny is a, a prisoner, I, I guess, in the current situation. Does that make it harder for you to make the case to be able to bring players in in this window? Listen, Dundee United is no different to any other club that I've I've ever managed at. And, you know, I I speak to a lot of other managers um, at clubs in Scotland and in England. And, um, you know, we're all in the same boat at the end of the day. You know, we make a big investment in our academy here. Um, you know, I, as manager, try to get as many of those young players on the pitch as possible to try and raise their profile and help them in their development. And you're hoping then that, you know, one or two of those players that you've invested in for the last 10, 12 years will then... Um, you know, will we'll then get sold on for, for lots of money like has happened in the past. The club have done that um, religiously over the last kind of 10 years, I suppose. So, you know, that's what the academy is there for. And then from us as a club's perspective, it's about being in the Premier League. You know, there's better prize money, better sponsorship. Everything is increased off the back of that. And um, every club in Scotland is in the exact same boat. The football budget's obviously been slashed quite a bit from it was when you first came in towards the end of last season. But does that sort of show, without blowing your own trumpet, you know how good a job you've done to you know sort of regroup and and get a side capable of winning promotion this season back on the pitch? Um, no, listen. I've I've said previously um, in, in in a number of interviews. You know, I think the job that we are doing right now is is what's expected of us. You know. People may have expected us to be a dozen points clear at the top of the league at this stage, but you know that's credit to Wraith Rovers for the season that they've had up to now. You know, but yeah, I mean we have had to um, do things a little bit differently, and we you know we've signed players that you know work within the budget and the restraints of that. Um, but I'm certainly I think it would be a bit of a brass neck of me to sit here and uh, look for sympathy off the other nine managers in the league because I'm pretty sure that they would. You know, love to have the resources that we have here at Dundee United. You know, we've got great facilities, fantastic stadium, great fan base, um, and I'm not sure of what other budgets are at other clubs, but I would imagine we've probably got the biggest one. Albeit, yes, considerably less than what it was last season in the Premier League, but that's 
only natural when you get relegated. They, they are the, the sacrifices that you have to make and no different to any other manager. I've just got to work within you know the constraints that what we're, we're given and um, I've had great support from the chief executive and from the rest of the board um, you know they back me again in this window um, and they'll continue to back me and that's all I can ask for as manager and then it's up to me um, you know as the leader of this group to you know make sure that we get the results required to get us back to where we believe we belong. And you've obviously brought in Grieve and Wotherspoon, but you can see obviously the, the injury situation as well. Um, are you Have you been told you'll, you'll have more finances to bring in more players in this window? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Alex Grieve one is is done. Um, you know, the, the Wotherspoon one, uh, he's still um, you know registered with Inverness, so we're not going to talk about that one. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm delighted to get Alex Grieve in. I think, uh, you know, as I said, he's a player that I know well. Having worked with him closely at St Mirren, um, you know we've been running with two experienced strikers and Tony Watt and Louis Moult, and I think we've you know got away with it up to now, if you like, with both of them being available for the period of time that they have been. But we couldn't possibly go through this window and not bring in another one. So, hence why Alex is here, and um, it's a great third option for me. Uh, good competition in those forward areas as well. You know nobody guaranteed a place in the team. Keeps everybody on their toes. And we will continue to, to add to the squad throughout the window. Um, as I said, I've had great support from everybody here and we're all on the same page in terms of trying to improve the group to make us as successful as possible. And obviously in Burness tomorrow night, um, how important is it that you bounce back from the disappointment of the Morton game and, and get back to the winning ways that you were on? Uh, yeah, of course, it's crucial that we... Um, that we do that, you know, and, and that we um, get back to winning ways as soon as possible. I think the incentive there for the group, and we spoke about it after training, is to win the game, you know, go top of the table after the game. Um, OK, it might only be for a few hours, depending on what uh, what happens in the Wraith fixture. Um, but, you know, we have to go and try and put pressure on Wraith Rovers. And, you know, we've got the opportunity to do that first tomorrow. Um and, and the group have always reacted, you know, very, very well to, to disappointment in the past. And, um, you know, I expect no different for them tomorrow. Thank you. Jim, speaking of strikers, is Louis Moult uh, going to be OK? I know you took him off as a, as a precaution. Yeah, I've just got a decision to make on Louis um, this afternoon. I've got a meeting uh, with the staff down the stairs uh, at half past two, and we will uh, put a plan in place for Louis. You know, he's trained today with the, the medical team, um, and, you know, as long as there wasn't any reaction to what he's been asked to do today, then, of course, he'll be part of the squad. You know, a 50% Louis Moult would be in our group, that's for sure. But we just have to be, um, in, you know, sensible about the decision because I don't want this hamstring to become a tear and then it becomes a, a two- or a three-month thing. You know, we have to look after him um, and manage him properly and we'll make whatever decision we feel is right for Louis and for the team this afternoon. Of course, and, and just looking at tomorrow night's game, a big match for both clubs. There's going to be a lot of eyes and a lot of ears on the match. How important is it United deliver on the big stage? Yeah, I, th I think we've done that uh, in the main all season. You know, I think we have stepped up and um, you know, rose to the occasion, if you like, when the game is on a Friday night live on the telly. Um, you know, we've, we've always seemed to have performed, uh, apart from, you could say that, that game at Hamden that finished nil nil, but in, in the other games that we've been involved in, you know, we've managed to to get maximum points and score plenty of goals. So we're hoping for a a similar performance tomorrow night up in Inverness. It's always a difficult venue. You've obviously got the travel implications. Um, you know, Inverness on the Duncan Ferguson, very well organised, uh, high energy at the top end of the pitch. So you know, we've got to make sure that we give them the utmost respect that they deserve. It was a really close game here against them last time. Um, so yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a difficult one, but it's one that we're we're looking forward to. Thanks. The, Thank the Emily business you've done in the transfer window is very much in the short term to the end of the season. You mentioned about other uh, interests that you're looking. Is that to take it to the end of the season, or is that looking for a return to the Premier League? What you're going to look at? Well, where we're at right now as as a club is uh, is short term. You know, it's about. Um, you know, trying to make sure that we get back to the Premier League. And I think the players who are here at the moment, uh, who are going into the final months of their contract, I think the players that we're bringing in on short-term deals um, are all understanding of the situation. I think that can um, be a positive as well sometimes in terms of keeping everybody on their toes, nobody's comfortable. Um, 
you know, and there's always something to play for. You know, there's a lot on the line anyway. Trying to get the club back into the Premier League is is the biggest thing. But from the players' perspectives uh, on a personal level, you know, they're playing for their futures and playing for their careers and much am I, you know, and, and the rest of the staff. So, um, you know, that's where we're at at the moment. We're thinking about the next five, six months and, um, you know, hopefully having a successful period and and looking forward to uh, to the Premier League next season. Is that something that you feel would, would enhance the players, obviously, this, this incentive to, that there might be something else coming there? Yeah, I, I think it does. I think I've, I've been there plenty of times myself as a, as a, as a player, um, with clubs, you know, going into the final six months of my contract, and it definitely does, uh, it do- definitely does drive you on and, and motivate you. And um, I would expect no different from this group. Looking at the game for tomorrow, the last time you played in Burness, it was very early in Duncan Ferguson's managerial career up there. Do you, do you see or have seen any differences in, in what he's done up there between then and now? Um, yeah, I mean, when we played them. Uh, Away from home in, in the early part of the season, um, you know they were in that caretaker period. Uh, John Robertson had stepped into the hot seat, and a really close game. And um, you know it, it could have went either way. And then you know obviously we get that late goal at the end. Um, but Duncan has definitely made significant changes. I would say tactically uh, to the team, a different kind of formation, um, different approach to the game as well. And he's got you know some very good young energetic players in there that. Um, you know, he got a real positive reaction initially. Um, you know, okay, lately in the last five six games, it's maybe been a little bit up and down, and you know, lack of consistency. But we, uh, you know, we really do respect him, and you know, I rate Duncan as a as a manager, and um, they've got a number of really good players in their team. So we have to make sure that we're we're at our best if we want to take the result back down the road with us.